And now, live? yes, we are live. Hi, everyone. Yes, There's now everybody. we're sure. Robin. Chris, we are here. This is so, so good. There's yes. Deb in Wales. Hi, Deb. Who saying Deb hi is in her Mickey. pajamas. So you, I am so happy. Welcome to an unlikely story. Look, we got our wreath up and a little bit of snow just to put us in the mood. And Susan is in her just lovely kitchen that I adore. Um, thank you so much for joining us here. And I hope you all have a cup of tea handy or a cup of coke. So I just have a couple of housekeeping items to start. If you lose your connection or your video, just refresh your page or exit out of your browser and jump right back in. Um, and sometimes if you just wait a minute, it'll come back. If you have questions for Susan, and I know you guys do, you can type them in the ask a question box at the bottom of your screen. So what I would like to do, since there are, oh my gosh, a thousand of you, um, read through the questions first. And then if you see your question there, you can upvote it. And then the most popular questions will float to the top. Um, and just, I know, so people are like, I'm so glad to be here. I'm like, okay, but that you're blog, you're bogging my questions. <laughs> They're not the only ones. I'm so glad to be here. Hi, everyone. Me oh, too. Goodness. Yes. This so I'm going to keep my intro extremely short today. Uh, there's something very special about you, Susan, in that, again, 1,034 people watching today. And I'm guessing that along with me, you guys all feel like we're her girlfriends. Her writing brings us right into our home. She shares her recipes, her quilts, that now I'm gonna drape quilts over my kitchen chairs and even her yard sale. And she somehow finds the perfect quote and brings it to delightful life with her warm watercolors. And it seems to me that loneliness is one of the worst parts of this pandemic. And so I'm very honored to welcome Susan today for tea and conversation because those connections that will get us through all of this. Um, before we get started, I just would like to thank Susan for the conversation that we had about bundling the book with the ticket, which is, you know, that's what we want to do. We want to sell books at the bookstore to keep us going. Um, but Susan really wanted as many of her fans as possible to attend since it is her last event of the year and suggested that instead we maybe charge a small fee. And it really made me stop and realize just how much we all need times like this with the people who bring our hearts so much joy. So as Susan says, we all need a little extra Christmas this year. So if you would like to purchase a copy of Home for Christmas, please click on the green button below so we can continue bringing these amazing events to you. Susan has kindly signed many, many book plates for us. So you will receive one with your book. And that's me. And Susan, thank welcome. you. Welcome. Thank you so much, you guys. Unlikely Story, that's the name of this wonderful bookstore in Western Massachusetts. I've been there in person. Yes. And it's so charming. And if you're ever in that neck of the woods, you should just make it a go-to spot. Um, but uh, this, the fact that they made this all free, I just, yeah, got me right there. That was the best yeah, thing. Which is so everybody, look at Annalise is saying, why do I feel nervous? <laughs> oh, well, how do you think I feel, Annalise? Like, this is the too. biggest we've ever had. <laughs> Well, you know, it is it is like so great to see. There's Rachel, my 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 dear friend who lives in in England outside of London, and I've got you know there's one of the Carries there. I'm not sure which Carrie that might be, but so we have a lot of people that we know from uh, from my blog and from just all yeah. the years of doing this, and it's just great that you guys made it possible. It's my last yeah. one for the year. And that is a very nice Christmas present you gave everybody. So thank you, Ken. That well, was great. You end up getting, when you give, you get more than you give. So that's really how I feel about it. Um, okay. So we have a question for Rachel. And she said you somebody would Somebody says about... Susan. Somebody, excuse me. Somebody says oh, Susan yeah. is blurry. And oh. I'm always blurry. I wonder why I'm blurry. Is there something on your camera lens? Oh, Joyce says, Susan, use a Q-tip to clean your camera lens. <laughs> well, you know, it's only 100 years old and probably <laughs> never been cleaned. I don't know if that's, that's any better or not. I think it's better. Slightly better. Yeah, hey, Joe, a little better. Can you bring me a Q-tip? <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, my I God. I need to clean this little... No one ever suggested that before, but what a good idea. I mean, That's is so that funny. little green light up there? That's what I'm supposed to be. Yeah, well, it's yeah. the little the little thing next to the green light. 
Next. Right to the left, maybe? Yeah, the little glass. That seems better. Oh, that's one thing. I see it. This is funny. Yep, that's a little better. Yay, Joe. <laughs> Joe's All right. Some love. <laughs> Best we could do there, guys. That's, that's, I think it's much better. No, Thanks, it is, Joe. It is a little bit better. I'll work on that. Okay. Because you're so clear. That's fine. You look great. Oh, well, thank you. You do look, I'm just, I love that our Christmas wreath is up. I love that um, Jeff Kinney, even, you know, in the middle of all this, he's got the entire, oh, look, the lights came on. He's got the entire building lit up for Christmas. So. That's wonderful. Yeah, Nothing. I think everybody's doing lots more um, outdoor Christmas stuff this year, you know, decorating so that, you know, make cheer up the neighborhood. Make, yeah. Give us a reason, go for a drive, especially here where we're not so, uh, it's not so easy to, uh, you know, it's freezing. Yeah. <laughs> so we, it, we aren't going to be out as much as the lucky California people. Yes, I know. So exactly. Kim and I just discovered something. I'll tell you guys. Uh, we just were talking like for three minutes before we got on here, and she's originally from Santa Barbara, which is about an hour and a half from where I'm, more or less, from San Luis Obispo, where a lot of you know where I'm from. And so, like, and here we are in Massachusetts. Here we are, and it How started with this conversation here? about your stove because I had the same <laughs> stove in our little cottage where we live. <laughs> Yep, clean your face. Yes, a bit washing, Carol. All right, so we have 12. Here's the top question. You ready, Susan? I'm ready. Okay. So she said, hi, Susan. You had talked about possibly buying Holly Oak again. Is that happening? Well, the woman who lives there doesn't want to go. <laughs> that oh. is the problem. Holly That's Oak is this tiny. I dream about it. I, I would really love to make it into, you know, I'd love to make it, I'd love to do with Hollyoak with what Beatrix Potter did with Hilltop. Because Hilltop is tiny and, you know, she took all her most amazing treasures. And just like her, I don't have any children. So my treasures are going to be scattered to the wind. And it would be so nice if they could go into a little house with quilts and all the, my Beatrix Potter people and all the things that I love would be so nice. And then, you know, it could stay there forever and whatever. People could come visit if they wanted to and see a little house in the woods on Martha's Vineyard. But the lady who lives there right now loves it. So mm -hmm. I, I have no power over her. Um, actually, I would, I think if I offered her enough money, but I don't think I have that much money, I think I need a GoFundMe. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm That's thinking what about. Someone her. says, yep. Carrie says maybe we should start a GoFundMe page for Hollyoak. That's okay, guys. Not the first. <laughs> Look, and somebody tells tells me when I'm cleaning that thing, use alcohol, not spit. <laughs> Too late. Yeah, uh, somebody else suggested that uh, that I do that, and I don't have the, the nerve. You know, there's a certain amount of nerve you need to start a GoFundMe, and I so far don't have that nerve. But that's what I would love to do because I've got the stuff. Boy, you know, all the little cutie things that I've written about and painted, the bowls and things that I've painted, all that stuff is all here. So, you know, you never know. You just never know. Yes. My I dad know. told me to put a picture of it on a piece of paper and try it under it, I want you back. And that is in my studio and has been ever since he told me to do that. And so we're just waiting for the powers that be to get on with it. Okay, so here's another question. So, oh, this is a good one. What is a Christmas gift that you've received an adult that has been a favorite? As an adult, a Christmas yeah. gift that I've received. Well, my best gift is my husband, actually. Mm. <laughs> like, look at me right now. Like, oh. And uh, I don't know. I. I I can't even, isn't that a funny thing? What Christmas gift have I gotten? And I've gotten, you know, um, I think Joe gave me a ring one time, but it it's just a big, giant, heart-shaped rhinestone, red, really big, like that big, big red. And actually, I wore it when I got married. So when we got married. So that is one of my favorites. Not, you know, it's only got 
sentimental value, but it, I like it. And a lot of times I've gotten a little bit smarter and I just buy myself something from Santa and put it under the tree. And I always, always love that gift. <laughs> Those are always the favorites, the one that we buy for ourselves. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? A lot of people, a lot of people don't do that, and I've just, I just tried it a few years ago, and you know, it wasn't anything big or anything. I just, mm -hmm. it was just something I needed that I could use that I wanted, and I thought, why not? And I opened it, and it was as if it was a surprise. I was very surprised to find it under there. So I, that's one of my suggestions to how to have a very happy Christmas. Yes, I bought these glasses from France. They just came yesterday, and I'm so happy. Didn't oh, tell anybody. Really but just, I love them. They oh. look darling on you. Thank you. <laughs> um, so here's a question. So one of the reasons I have, so Don wrote this question, and um, a lot of other people voted it up. Uh, one of the reasons I absolutely love your work is that it exudes your positive outlook and happy Dean nature. My question is, how do you do it? This year has been so trying for the soul. What advice and wisdom would you give to help those of us who find ourselves feeling down at times? How can we absorb the same positivity and zest for life other than reading your wonderful books? <laughs> um, well, you know, it is a rough, rough time and it has gone on way too long and it looks like we're stuck with it for a few more months. And I think Joe and I and people in our age group are the lucky ones. I think the people younger they are, the more, the harder it is on them. And, uh, and so for us, we've always worked from home, you know, so we're, we're fine. But, um, but, and we have each other. We're not alone in the house. Sometimes we wish we were, <laughs> but, but, but uh, um, we're not. And it, and that, it's, you know, a blessing. And then I, I really, my heart aches for the people in the nursing homes and, and places where they're so discombobulated from their families and disconnected. And, and so, you know, mostly I think whenever I start to get sad about it, it's just so easy to get myself out of it by counting my blessings. Because, you know, here we are, we've, and I'm in my dream house that I've always wanted you know i have food to eat i mean there's just so many people going through so much nowadays that you know sometimes i think we're just so lucky and i've been starting knitting again and putting out pulling out things that you know i haven't had time to do and i was thinking for others you know that exploring something new because youtube is amazing as far as a teaching a place to learn because they teach watercolor, they teach beginning watercolor, oil painting, they teach knitting. Um, there's anything you want to learn. Guitar. I have a friend, someone who is taking guitar lessons on there. And, um, and you know, there's, we have to take advantage of it. We have to look at this as something that, um, you know, we have to own it now and not just hate it, hate it, hate it all the way through because it's it just is our it is our reality. Puzzles are good, <laughs> I think. That's uh, one good thing. And it, I, but that is what really keeps me happy is um, counting our blessings. We were watching CBS Sunday Morning this morning, which is like our favorite show on television. Have you ever watched it? It's been on for like forty years. I think so. Every every Sunday at um about i think it's oh. at nine o'clock till ten thirty, sunday morning yeah it, it's yeah. It, it's got so they did a, a 50th anniversary of pbs and they were showing everything from julia child to mr rogers to ken wow. burns and talking all about you know the goodness that they have put out over the years for all of us and, you know, at the end of it, Joe and I looked at each other. We both had tears in our eyes and we thought, why are we so touched by this? And yeah. that's what it was. Yeah. It was the goodness. They put they put that out. They put so much of it out there and they keep doing it and keep doing it. And that is what, you know, if it, there is so much of that in the world right now. It's hard to see sometimes, but that is what it is. And, um, you know, so we just have to do that ourselves this Christmas, is put out as much goodness as we can. Well, I was reading your blog as I was 
kind of writing my intro and then realizing I didn't really need to write an intro for you. <laughs> You'd much, we'd much rather hear you talk. And I noticed that the other tab that I had open was CNN and I go, oh, the contrast between the two. And so I closed that one out really quickly and I said, I wanna be here. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we all need to know nowadays because the world is going so fast that I am a full on news junkie person myself. I, I gotta know, I gotta know too much. And uh, but I also give myself big breaks from it because it is not healthy. And mm -hmm. just like when you cry because you're looking at the 50th anniversary of PBS, you know that there's something going on. And and we we just but lately I've been Little Women was on when when we first started this. It's on TV today. I've, there's just been. Uh, uh, Turner Classic Movies has been showing one good old fashioned thing after, and they just while you're working around the house, they just yeah. run the models of your heart. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. So this is from Alexia. She says it's so nice to be part of the event. Her question is: Have you decided on a Christmas menu for you and Joe this year, or for Jack? I wish you all the happiest of holidays. So yes, what is your Thank Christmas you. menu? Thank you. Christmas menu, well, we had a, I'll tell you what we did for Thanksgiving. We stuffed a big six pound chicken with my grandmother's um, dressing and made homemade cranberry sauce. And, and you guys all have all the recipes to all of this, I'm sure. And I made, um, we made an apple crisp. We made a pumpkin pie for dessert, which was bad, all bad, we ate it all. <laughs> Um, we, made, we made corn pudding and uh, really delicious gravy we had for, for the uh, stuffing. And it was just delicious. It was a feast. And it felt really nice to treat ourselves to it when we really knew we could have just didn't have to, right? But we went to the extra effort and lit some candles and it was absolutely perfect. So we'll do something like that at Christmas. I don't think we've really thought about Christmas dinner. We're just thinking about Christmas trees at this point and lights and all of that good stuff. I decided I'd had enough. The day before Thanksgiving, I went and bought the biggest, fattest tree I could find on the lot. <laughs> good girl. The day before Thanksgiving. Yes. You need it. We need all the twinkle lights. It's 2020. I'm that's buying the biggest, too. that's it's it. 2020. So here's what I'm gonna do on New Year's Eve. If, okay. Unless the weather does not allow, I am going to light the fire in our fire pit outside and okay. go okay. out there with my 2020 calendar and rip each page off and burn <laughs> it and say a prayer for, oh my gosh, peace and goodwill <laughs> for 2021. I'm just hoping it's gonna be wonderful. Yes. But I think yes. that'd be a good way to spend New Year's Eve. I agree. I think we should all do that and we should all get on Zoom together and do it together. We should, and we should all, because I think they say, if you all say a prayer at the same time, and it all, then it makes wonders. And boy, do we need some wonders. We need we some do. Christmas magic. We, we do. Need. I have to yeah. say, we've had some very incredible, at the end of the year, we've had some amazing authors with just great energy. And so we're, I like, I like ending the year this way. You, you get some really amazing people who come to your bookstore. That we is do. a terrific. You do. I feel so lucky. See, this is the way I get through it. I'm kind of like hopscotch from author event to author event. <laughs> well, you know, how much inspiration can one person take, right? You could write a book. Why don't you write a book on that? What I learned from each and every one of these people. That's a great I love that idea. Thank you, And then Susan. you can pick one of them. And say, you know, if there's a mean one, you can say, what I learned from this one, don't invite that one back. <laughs> Oh, but, you awesome. know, that, that would be fun. That would be fun. Okay, so Nicole, dear Susan, you throw your whole self in and seem to celebrate with all of your senses. So she was wondering, what is your favorite smell, one that instantly brings back happy memories? Well, it's so simple. It's just cinnamon. You know, oh. I love the smell of cinnamon. And that's that's something, of course, that, you know, reminds you of your mother and Cinnamon toast, basically, it's so simple, and uh, and that kind of uh, that kind of memory. So you know, it's true because when I have a party, that's how I do a party. I say to myself, the five senses, 
you know, does it smell good? Does it taste good? Does it sound good? Does it feel good? So I set the heat a little lower so it's a little chilly, so people have to gather, not this mm -hmm. year, but normally. And, um, and if you do everything there, if, and so that all the senses are engaged, then, then you're gonna have a good party. And then the sixth sense, which is imagination. So you have to do a little something flippy <laughs> to add to it. Okay, I had a good one. So a lot of people are asking about Joe. And um, how long have you been married to Joe? And are you ever going to tell us that story? So, Ivania um, from no. Germany. <laughs> no, that's yours. That's mine. Actually, I want to tell it, but that's why I haven't told this because I'm saving it because I have a perfect thing called a book that I'd like to do just called Home. And uh, because we were married here and I would like that to be a part of a story for that. So I'd like him to come in here, but Joby, yes, do you want to come have him on the screen? Next best thing to tell Joby. the story. It, I call him Joby because his middle name is Buckminster. So I have four brothers and they all think they're cowboys. And, uh, <laughs> you know, when I was going to bring my uh, New England boyfriend out to meet them the first time, I said, you know, I thought, okay. I said, I want you to eat, meet my new boyfriend. His name is Joe Buck. And that was it. They instantly loved him and uh, <laughs> tried to kill him with all the alcohol they could get their hands on. But uh, so I think that's the thing. I call him Joe B. That is great. Well, maybe he'll, maybe he'll pop in. Joe, um, honey, come think about it before it's over, okay? Come before, before we're done. He's coming now just to get it, what? Over with? Now he has very long hair. Oh, excellent. No, no, you look darling. I shouldn't have told you. Okay. you look, oh, you look Mary, Mary says, tell Joe to bring the Q-tip. <laughs> he, he did. Did. <laughs> did you dip it in? What did you dip it in? Yeah, I dipped it in the... Uh... I don't know. I just worried. I'm worried that it's going to be. Uh, yeah, we're good now. Be, uh, uh, oh my! Oh, hi, Joe. Better. Oh, that hi. is better. Excellent. Yeah. Hello. No, nice you're perfect you. now, Susan. That's Kim. Hey, did we did we meet Hello. about four years ago when when Sue did a book signing there? Yep, I we certainly so. did Looking at the luncheon. Yeah. That was a wonderful uh, afternoon. Oh boy, that, that was a wonderful afternoon. Now what happened? Did it no, die? you're just moving around, so it just needs to focus oh, on you. When you move around, too much it. Um, yes, and the funniest thing is when Susan, the first time she came in the store, did not even say anything. She just came in and wandered around, and we're, oh, do you want to sign <laughs> my book? You know why? <laughs> the store. I, I was shopping. Well, I, th I think you had you. I think you had a terribly long line, uh, and uh, it was a little intimidating. So it, yeah. Uh, uh, but boy, that's a wonderful place to be here. I love that. Very lucky yeah. to be here. But very nice to see you, Joe. Does anybody? Just, hi, Joe Buckminster, dear. That's Christy Levin saying hello. Oh, hi, Christy. Hi, Susan. Here's Hello. Gert. Hi, Gert. Hi, now. Susan. I think of my mom when I see cinnamon or extra pie crust. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't this Definitely. great, honey? There's Rachel. Look at the XOXO. Oh, XO. Ooh, love you more. I know. We could just stare. <laughs> I know. We could just stare at this. This is too neat. <laughs> This is very, this is addicting. It's, I have to get out of here. This is, <laughs> this is <good. laughs> this Excellent. Guy, it does not do 20th century. So, I, uh, no, my husband doesn't either. Yeah, I need a I Zoom. Really. Yeah. Have a good time. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, honey. Love you all. Appreciate it. Oh, oh now you're clear as a bell now, Susan. This is great. Much better. Yes. I just, I you never, all this time, I've done these like, you know, all these Zoom things for this book and not one person has said, filthy. <laughs> and here you are at the last event and now your screen is clear. The last event and it'll, I will remember the next time I do it. But yeah, that's great. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, girls. I yes. know, see, this is what I do. If I have a question, I just put yes. it up on my blog and they make You have the happen. best fans, absolutely. The best. They're, they're my girlfriends, yeah. I come in and read the comments. Okay, so here's a question from Linda. I like this one. What item do you still have from childhood at Christmas that you treasure? Um, Linda has a tea set from 1958, age three, which is set out each year on Christmas Eve with a treat for Santa. 
That's awesome. But was it a plate? What was it her thing? Yeah. What? But it was a tea set. A tea set. Oh, how wonderful. I have uh, ornaments that I made when I was little, really uh, kind of misshapen corduroy star with points that go in all different directions. And, uh, you know, there's a candy cane made with stripe and it, you can see the stitches and all the things. Those are like, you know, some of my favorite things that I put on the tree that I've had for a million years. I have the stocking my mother made for me. That still goes up every year. Yeah. So, That's so you know, special. all those little things you keep from the, you know, from the way back machine. Right. Oh, that's yeah. some special. Joe, Joe has the killer thing from his childhood. He has a felt stocking that has a white top and red bottom. And uh, it, it's been, it was the animal stocking. It was the stocking for Bitsy, <laughs> Mitzi, Nosy, Pudikins, Sammy, Georgia. Georgia. And each time the animal died. died <laughs> Went away. They crossed it out. <laughs> they put it on there with a marking print and put in the new animal. So there comes Sammy. Mm -hmm. There comes put it. That is hilarious. And we <laughs> hang that every year. It's so cute. It's it's kind of like when you go into a house and they've measured their children all the way up the wall. It's a thing like that. It's the history. Oh, that is fantastic. Life. Yeah, it is really cute. So we had a couple of questions. So Marley um, finished home for Christmas and cried when it ended. And what a wonderful beautiful tribute to your wonderful Christmas of past and your lovely family. So what inspired you to write this book? Well, you know, I was uh, reading this, I was reading a, my nieces were visiting and they were mm -hmm. six and like, no, like four and six years old. And uh, they asked me to read them a story. And I had this tiny little old book uh, that I'd gotten a, in a, in a used bookstore. And I, uh, and I had never read it. I just used it. It was very cute for decor. I used it for the, you know, to hang around at Christmas time. And I thought, I'll read them this. And I read it to them. And it was the story of a grandmother telling her uh, child about Christmas when she was little. And it was published mm -hmm. in 1938. So we're really talking about a Christmas around 1880s. And it, you know, the tree has real candles on it. And just was the most wonderful back in time simple simple plain little story but the little girls were their eyes were all lit up and all of a sudden you know as i was doing it i thought oh my goodness i can tell the story of christmas 65 years ago i can't even believe it when i say that and i thought you know i put that idea on the back burner. I mean, I just always thought I would write that because it's just a little tiny bit of history, Christmas 1956, um, USA kind of thing. And um, and then this year, uh, I had planned to have a book out called Enchanted. I planned to have it out for this Christmas. The powers that be did not want that to happen. Therefore, uh, I thought, well, maybe this is the year for the Christmas book because this is the pandemic. We need, we need a little extra Christmas this year. And as I started writing it, my mother went um, under hospice care. She'd been sick for quite a long time. So this was like in, in, um, in March. And, uh, and I thought, what a time to spend Christmas in 1956. So uh, while I was writing that, I was with her, as you can, anyone who's read it knows that she's right there the whole time. And it was just a great way to not, to celebrate. She had, she had, um, she had dementia. So we had not, you know, had her in real life for a long time. But this mm -hmm. way I had her full on the way that she was. And so that's, that's where that book came from. And so I hurried, hurried, hurried and wrote it and um, and got it ready for this Christmas. Wow, that is awesome. So we have a message. Cassie's on Facebook um, monitoring the questions. And um, Carolyn says, Susan, you saved me during my first two years of retirement from teaching. I was lost and you were my anchor. Yeah. That is awesome. 
So it, it's good. kind of did I just like grab your leg and hold you down? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we need. Well, that. thank you for being a teacher. I mean, all of our teachers and and uh, nurses and first responders and everybody these days are just amazing, amazing people. What they're doing and keeping yes. our world going and being there for us. So absolutely. But I I also sure. think that. Um, Artists like you, Susan, are just as important because we have to have joy in our lives too. You help us, like this helps us get through. So you're doing important work too. We appreciate you. Yeah. So Tammy that's said- why I don't, That's why I don't let any politics go on my blog because I try to keep my blog a place where we could be all like yesteryear and yes. you know talk about the things that we all have in common, home and family and decorating and all the little simple cooking things that we love. Yes. Well, Jeff has done the same thing with the store. There is absolutely, if there is, as when during the election, if there was Democrat pasta, there needed to be Republican pasta and the piles needed to be equal. <laughs> so anyone coming in the store can feel welcome. And I think that's, that's very important. It is very important. It is very important. It's a really, really rough time and a lot of misunderstanding going on. And we really are, in my opinion, all in it together. And I um, really yeah. hope that that gets to be more the way it is for the next year. Well, maybe this is, maybe that's what's going to come out of this. Um, because I know I've been you know, home with my family and I've never been so home. I actually really like spending time with my husband. <laughs> I was, I was very happy. So that after 30 years like <laughs> yeah I agree. yeah it's uh it is a uh it's been there's been a lot of good that's come out of this we won't see as much of it until it's all over right but i think next christmas oh my god can you imagine yeah. the hugs it is oh the hugs i was just gonna say that the hugs the dinner table so many hugs the connection it is gonna be fun it is going to so be. So we have a lot to look forward. Yeah, you will have to come here, Susan, and I will throw you a big party. Okay, <laughs> that sounds good. What <laughs> I should do is write another book real quick, and then come there for the for the okay. for the uh, okay. That'd be fun. Okay. That's the deal. Okay. So Tammy has a question. It kind of tied into the same thing. You have created a beautiful community of girlfriends. Do you get excited, nervous in the days or hours before you go to book signings, picnics, or online video with all the girlfriends? Oh, I get very nervous. This is a nerve wracking thing to do, but uh, it doesn't last very long because everybody is, look at these beautiful messages and, and how uh, everybody is so great. We have our picnics. We've had two picnics in England. So what I've done is I've gone on my uh, I've gone on my uh, blog and I've said, okay, we're going to be at Beatrix Potter's Garden at, at uh, Castle Cottage at noon on May 11th. Anybody who can be there should just come, and they do. Wow. We've had two picnics and and uh, everybody, it's BYO picnic basket, and they just they came there and then we had another one at a wonderful garden called Stourhead. And they come from America, and then my English girlfriends and my Norwegian girlfriends, and all, and you know they all come, and it's just a, uh, it's just a wonderful. It's just been a wonderful thing, you know. Wow. When I first started writing books, I've always been a girlfriend's girlfriend because I'm the oldest of eight children, and all I have is me, and then four brothers to start with, and then I got three sisters, but it was it was kind of too late, so. Uh, I always had a, a girlfriend. Always, could, my mother used to let them come on vacation with us sometimes, and and uh, and so when I was writing uh, Heart of the Home, I was you know thinking about well, really, I was writing for my sisters. I wanted them to, and you know, cooking had given me a lot of self esteem, and I wanted them to have that. So uh, it was really for them, but. After I wrote the book, I, I got uh, my a fan letter, my first fan letter, and it was like complete shock and surprise, not expecting it at all, never thought about it really. But where would that happen? How would that happen? Yeah. And But then as I was writing the next books, I thought, and I would get more and more letters, I started thinking, if these girls could meet each other, wouldn't they love knowing 
how great they are. Because the letters were all about home and family and nice and kindness and everything. And then, but of course it could never happen, right? I mean, how could that possibly happen in 1987, yeah. you know? Right. And, yeah. uh, and yeah. finally, I, in fact, I even started sending out a newsletter to do my very best to just sort of join everybody together, but they still couldn't talk to each other. And then, hello, computer. Hello, blog. Yeah. Hello, everything. Now we can all talk to each other on a thousand different ways. And it has been That's great. Fun. And so, uh, you know, we've met each other. A lot of us have met and it's just been a real thing. Oh, that's awesome. Christy's got the best comment. Oh, that Beatrix Potter picnic. Oh my goodness, I think the Lake District moved into my heart that weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a great comment. We're all Christy. homesick for it. We're all yes. homesick for it. We are. I, I, you know, everybody says to me, the minute this pandemic is over, I'm going to come visit you on Martha's Vineyard. And I say, well, that's fine, but we won't be here. here <laughs> I think everybody's going to be on the road the minute this yes. thing is so over. What Jeff asked this question and he every time he has an event. And so I'm going to sneak it in here. So what is the first thing you're going to do? Oh, we're going to England. You're going to England. We're going to get on board the Queen Mary and we are going to England. We've already got it all basically planned. We're, we're going not till 2022 okay. because we're going to make sure everything is copacetic. We're not going to get our hopes up before, but um, yeah, we're going to go over there. Oh, actually, the very first thing we're going to do is probably next fall, we're going to go home. We're going to go to California. Oh, so, excellent. Uh, and have, we're going to, we already decided we're going to invite, you know, a big family reunion in honor of my mother. We're going to have um, the two other really close to us families growing up will come mm -hmm. and we're going to put big, long, tables next to the oh. creek and everybody's oh. going to bring food and we're going to have just a big wonderful hug fest hopefully Excellent. by then yeah that sounds that's fantastic i know yeah that, i would okay you just tell me when that is i'll go visit my mom at the same time and i'll crash okay your <laughs> all right that would be great you'd fit right in you would yes. you'd love it <laughs> oh awesome so Janice has a question and um, a lot of people have upvoted it. So she'd like to know, do you have to schedule your days to handle working on so many great projects like your calendar art, your books, your great blog posts, your mugs, any tips you can give besides getting up at the crack of dawn like you do? <laughs> <laughs> That's my best tip. Uh, you know, you do, you do have to be, I'm not gonna say, you know, a deadline is real good. That, that's mm. those are that they help a lot. But you you know when most everything I do because I'm I self publish myself now. I know I am my own deadline. Uh, when it comes to having the cups, it takes uh, three months to get the cups made. They're made in England and and it takes a long time. If you want one for April, you gotta start planning on it now. And you know so you do have to. But it's like. It's like when, you know, when you're a kid and when I was a kid, I would get my allowance and just go out and buy people presents for oh, six cents each, whatever I could do. I like, I like uh, doing that. And so that's kind of what this is. It's sort of like my way of like saying, what can I give them next? You know, I think about that. Um, and uh, what would they like? Like right now I am, um, I know they like quotes and I've collected quotes for all my life and That's I have quotes. billions of them. And so I'm writing a book that is, it's called, um, cause I, my total education came from quote books. So, and I call quote books, I call them distilled genius because everything that's needed to be said has been said by somebody wonderful who should be the one to say it. Now, and is that the title? That should be the title. Distilled, distilled Genius. Distilled Genius. Um, there's another part of the title that I can't remember right now. Distilled Genius. You get the general gist, though. And in, in most of the, you know, a lot of them are already in watercolors and stuff. So I just put them in order. So I'm going to put them in order, like, the way I have them for myself. I have, like, there's they're in sections. They're, like, Courage. They're like mother, they're like Christmas, they're like babies, 
there's uh, spirituality, there's, and so there's, I have those all in, you know, all the spirituality ones together and all the Christmas things together. So I'm just going to do it that way. And instead of doing it by author, I'm just going to do all my very, very favorite ones under subject. And I don't oh, I know how many books it might make. Yeah, I've been working on it. It's it's wow. getting there already. So, that is you know, I think everyone will like that. I think that, you know, I need that out there because yeah. everybody, you know, it, there's so much wisdom in the world that, it, you know, that these people have, have they're teachers, right? And, and who doesn't want to get as much of that as you can? So. Well, you need different knowledge at different points in your life. You know, my like, right. my early 50s is a lot different than it was, you know, 10 years ago or when I had my kids. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, well, we go through, I mean, we have the seasons, you know, and, you know, your 20s are, are for exploration and, you know, you're not supposed to know what you want to do in your 20s, even though you beat yourself up for not knowing. <laughs> And yep. your 30s, you're really not supposed to know too much about it then either. And, you know, it takes a while to grow into all of the, uh, and finally, you know, you start to get there, get a little inkling of who you really are in, in your 40s because you've, you know, you've got to give yourself time to, to grow into who you are and become all the things that you love. Right, you, you find that you're a person who likes bubble baths, and that's part of who you are. Or you yes. love to knit, and that's part of who you are. Or you love to work in a bookstore, and that's yes. you know, yeah. And so you have to get all those things, and it takes a long time. You just about get good, and then you know, I mean, <laughs> you start going. <laughs> anyway, so this is a great question from Melissa. And she says, as a single woman from Texas who has always dreamed of moving to, the, to New England, your book, Martha's Vineyard, Isle of Dreams, inspired me so much. She read it last month and it gave me so much courage to finally put plans in place and start working towards my goal. What advice do you have for someone moving to a totally new place where they don't have friends or family ties? Well, it's a very difficult thing to do. And if I knew uh, how difficult it was, I don't know that I would have done it. At this time, mm -hmm. I say to myself, if you're gonna move someplace, move someplace where you know at least one other person. It's very, very hard. Uh, I, and I did it because I was uh, young. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was, you know, I was like 33 or something. And I, and I just, and I also really needed to escape. And I'd always wanted to see what it was like to live in New England. So. You know, I wanted to be there, but it, advice now that I know that that I did not know then. When you're young, you get all your friends in school. When you get older, you get a lot of your friends from work. If you work at home like I do, uh, you're like in a big pickle. But one of my girlfriends who moved here, Martha, uh, got here and volu started volunteering at the hospital and she started doing uh, you know putting together the once a year hospital fundraiser so what she did is she made a work uh, uh connection for herself where she met all of her friends through there and and that's how she ended up so you really have to if you want to have friends and you do you need them um you got to join something You've got to volunteer for something and get, you know, and work a lot because you can't, you know, superficial friends you meet in a bar, <laughs> that's just not going to do it. You've got to work beside someone in order to be friends, have friendship with them. So that's one really good piece of advice. If I may take a moment, because I had one yes. of the gals who's on here, Shannon Keene, Shannon from uh, Twitter today asked me if I would read a certain thing from uh, Martha's Vineyard Isle of Dreams. It's real little, but it's her favorite passage in there. And it's about the island. So I just read it real fast, okay? Okay. So it, it's, it says, because Martha's Vineyard is an island, no matter which direction the wind comes from and no matter what season, it has to blow across the ocean before it gets to us. It filters through the many woods and meadows, not only carrying the fragrance of the sea, but gathering perfume from everything that grows wild, goldenrod, 
clematis, wild apples, and pine, blueberries, beach plums, asters, and bavery. It slips in and out of seashells, climbs tree trunks, dives into squirrel holes, slides along old porch rails, stumbles through the bittersweet, skips along picket fences, scoots beneath falling leaves, whistles past ancient graveyards, flits over and under dragonfly wings, and steals all the wishes off the dandelion puffs, flinging them in every direction, wishes for all. And to all a good night. Oh, that is fantastic. Thank you so that's for asking. Island. Yes. Yeah. She well, are you on Twitter? Oh, how, yeah. was your, how was your Twitter different from your blog? It's politics. Mm. It's, you know, because Twitter is politics. Yeah. Um, but I, but I'm also on Instagram and Facebook, and there's and those are all non-political. So Twitter is uh, Twitter is where um, I try. I've been watching the world for a long time, mm -hmm. and watching you know kind of what what ha how things have been going, um, and I don't really think of it as as politics as as usual i think of it more as what are we going to do to make this government work for everybody and that is a that is a bottom line thing that isn't republican or democrat they got us all in all kind of corners thinking about this thing and yep. the other thing but the real thing is what is going on in there where the rich are getting richer and the people the middle class is sort of disappearing so to me that system is all that matters. Uh, getting that changed is not going to be an easy thing to do, but we have never had a place like Twitter where we could come together and say, hey, you know, this is not right. And, you know, it used to be just the people at the New York Times who decided everything, you know, but, but what about the people who, who, who live here? And I look at the difference between how life was in the 1950s when my dad had, my parents had eight children and my dad worked for the phone company and my mom stayed home with us. And we had a swimming pool and a four bedroom house. We all went to school, we had shoes. I mean, we weren't, it, it, you know, the middle class and the, the, the uh, you look at the, the, the whole freeway system all over the country was built. And it just, they had so many wonderful things going. Education costs hardly anything. You, I think we paid our doctors. We didn't have the interruption of the insurance companies and so forth. So what changed is the big, big question. And, and one of the things is that in those days, corporations, there were no billionaires. And corporations only uh, paid, uh, they paid 90% taxes. So there was a there was a real patriotism about making a better country. That's what it felt like then. And then slowly but surely, patriotism got eaten up by I say greed. But um, so that's what I that's where I am on on politics. You There's know. days. Have you read Heather Cox Richardson, Susan? No, I haven't. But oh, I'm writing she's it down. she's brilliant. She puts things all in a historical perspective and tells you, you know, where, how, what, how, where each party, and she's a historian. So she writes it from, she started writing it at the beginning of the pandemic. And this, I think it's letters from an American, but oh gosh, she's so good. Where, where are you reading it? On her website? Well, I subscribe to it. And then she also, oh. um, she, I, she's also on Twitter and she posts it on Facebook. Heather Cox Richardson. Yes. Did everybody yes, get that? Yes, she's amazing. So, Sometimes that's all I can read in a day. I'll just read Heather and then go on with my day. <laughs> but you see, history is is everything, isn't it? Yeah. You know, I mean, it, it's so fascinating. I, in fact, it, I have this thing sitting up high on a pile of books, and the very top one is The Splendid and the Vile, because I wanted Churchill to hold us up tonight. So, that is yeah, I, amazing. I, just, I, love, I love history, too. It's such a fun... You know, well, it's very interesting we how it, what the things happened like back in the 80s that have created where we are now, you know, it's right. Fascinating. Right. And, you know, it just gets a little worse and a little worse. But it's been such a tiny undoing 
that, mm. uh, you know, and there's a part of our, our government that I think most of us don't even see. Uh, that would be mm. K Street. And so, you know, that to me, and so I think it's fascinating. I think it's interesting. I've always been interested in it, you know, yeah. but um, we shall see what will happen. I'm hoping this is a big shakeup. This is the big shakeup that could, you know, get us on a different path. Well, I, it woke a lot of people up. There's yeah. some, you can say one good thing about Trump. You can say, thank you for waking us up. Yeah. We were asleep. We didn't know, and in, for some people, he woke them up in a good way. For some people, mm -hmm. he woke them up. He has just been a huge instigator <laughs> of and, many things. <laughs> yeah. So what are we going to get from it? There's good from everything. There is good from Very everything. True. Pollyanna told me, and she was right. So. Oh, I love this question. So if you could ask anyone, and Peggy is saying, if you could ask anyone famous, for dinner, who would you ask? But I would say, who would just anybody that you would ask? If you could ask anyone for dinner, who would well, you Mark ask? Well, Mark Twain. Oh. Uh, I, would, I would have to have Mark Twain come to dinner. I, I just, I love him. Oh love, my gosh. Love, what love. would you serve him? What would your party for Mark Twain look like? Lots and lots of candles. <laughs> and I would, it would be great in this dining room because it's Mark Twainy kind of dining, dining room. He'd fit right in. The house was built in uh, 1850, so he would, he'd be comfy. And uh, what would I feed him? I think mm -hmm. I'd give him some corn pudding oh, and be uh, because I, in maple syrup, I think he would like that. I think there's a, uh, I, I, you know, I have to think about that a little bit, you know, yeah. <laughs> I definitely want to go to that dinner party. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's uh, that was really fun. Yes, that was a very good question, Peggy. Thank you for asking it. Yeah, thank you. Um, so Tammy would like to ask, your watercolor lettering is so beautiful. Will you ever do a tutorial? And do you ever teach? I, I haven't ever taught. Um, you know, it's funny because I'm self-taught. And when you're self-taught, mm. you don't really think you know anything. And so yeah. in order to figure out how to teach it, I have to like first teach myself. Uh, so I haven't, but what was the first part of the question? Um, the, she loves your hand lettering. Would you do a tutorial? Oh, a tutorial. Um, yeah, I think about it, but I, you know, I'm all, I'm really, so it's just me and Joe here. Yeah. <laughs> And so the person who holds the camera mostly is me. And so when you see me <laughs> painting and holding the camera at the same time, when I do a little video, yeah, that's not, you know, I'd have to learn how. I need to learn how to be more. I need to stop everything and learn more stuff. And I just haven't made, made time to do that. Well, none of us want you to stop doing anything because <laughs> we're all excited for your next project. Yeah. Um, so Heather asks, your work inspires so many. Who or what inspires you? Oh, well, you know, people, what really inspires me are the lives of people who've overcome amazing challenges. Mm -hmm. And it, 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 it's always, it's like Beatrix Potter. She is my numero uno. She just what she's done to fight her way through her own times and get what she wanted to do out of life. You know, very, very wonderful and important person. I think heroes are something we should all figure out how to have, you know, they, these days they, they throw the baby out with the bathwater. So you mostly have to pick a dead one who hasn't been, you know, you need somebody who, but whose life that you can look at and say, mm -hmm. okay, so what would they do? What would they say? What would they suggest? Right. How would they choose to go? So, um, yeah. yeah, heroes are a, a really important part of. Yeah, I feel the same way about Jeff Kinney. He, um, he's a good person and he does amazing things like for the people that work for him. And, you know, he's just so quietly, um, does that so I always think like well what would Jeff do? Better. Yeah, oh, so so many people out there these days yeah. doing just amazing, uh, amazing things. Yeah, just giving back little and, and big. Yeah. Yes. 
All right. So should we do one one last question? Okay. I would keep talking to you. All of a sudden, Cassie says one more question. We've been talking for an hour. This is amazing. <laughs> oh, I, wait, Carol. <laughs> Susan Branch is my real life hero. I completely agree. Okay. So what? here's. She said, Carol says that you are her real life hero. Oh, oh thank you. That's so I love lovely. Well, you bring a lot of joy in the world. That's not a small thing. Well, uh, so it's a two-way street. That's the good yeah, news. <laughs> that is. Okay, so here's the last question. It's the top question from Lisa. Will there ever be a coloring book or painting book with her darling in oh, illustrations? Oh, so a coloring book or painting book from your um I would your love to do that. I um it would be really fun. Um, but I haven't got there yet. Okay. I haven't got there. The biggest, biggest monster book in front of me right now is a book called Enchanted. It's the story of a four month trip through Scotland, Ireland, England, and Wales. Oh gosh. And it's so it's a diary a lot like a fine romance. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, so I have uh I have to get that done. And it's all in a box. The big diary I wrote when I was over there is just stuffed full of good oh, things. Wow. I have so much to tell in it. I'm so excited about it. Oh, I can't but wait. Things keep coming and getting in the way and stopping me. So um, what I did do is I just produced the very first chapter. Really has nothing to do with the trip. It's sort of like in a fine romance, I wrote uh, the story of how Joe and I met in the beginning of a fine romance, which was another two month trip through England. Mm -hmm. And um, so the first chapter was how we met in a love story. So this in this book, Enchanted, I had gotten the first chapter completely done. And it is also a love story. Uh, but it, it so I just had it printed. It has just arrived at the studio like this week. I'm about to put it up on my blog. Very short. You know, it's just one one chapter, about 28 mm -hmm. pages. But uh, I just, you know, I can I, I feel so bad for not having gotten that book done that here I am. I'm just going to put it out. Here's a chapter. <laughs> Excellent. So. Oh, that's so fantastic. I Susan, I cannot thank you enough. I feel like I could go from tea to wine and sit and talk to you for another hour. <laughs> so. It's been it's been absolutely wonderful. And I'll also look at this, you know, seeing everybody. I know so many names here. Yes, it's that's just very cool. cool. It really is. Oh, 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 and we have two gifts. Oh, yes. We have two gifts. And I've got the names already here. And because we did the drawing earlier. And so what I'm giving away, girls, is you know what came in. And I don't know if you all got one because they're sold out now, which is terrible but it's just the way the cookie crumbles. But you know, here's our new puzzle. Oh, yeah. excellent. And it's called For the Love of Books. Isn't that just perfect? And wow. everything on it is people reading and stories and you can oh my kind gosh. of see. So I really have two hard. here that I'm holding <laughs> on to. And uh, it's a thousand pieces. That looks it hard. shouldn't be too hard I, I, because I'm, I got mine and I've started doing it. It's very fun. Oh and my so gosh, our two winners, is the first one is Marianne Ridenti, okay, R I D E N T I. So congratulations, Marianne. Yay, and congratulations, the second one Marianne. is Sandy. <laughs> and the second one is Sandy O'Connor. Awesome. Sandy. So so uh, Kim has your addresses. She's yep. gonna send them to me, yep. and I'm gonna get. We'll get in touch, and I'll pop one of these, and you'll have a little something to do at Christmas. Take your Excellent. mind off. Any, any of your worries. Okay. Fantastic. Oh, thank you so thank much, Susan. Thank Have you, a Kim, Thank you for doing this. It's just thank a, you. a nice, wonderful treat. Just this wonderful. one. I almost forgot there were a thousand people on, so that was a good thing. Yeah, and it, you know, somebody's asking if I do YouTube videos. Yes, I do them, little tiny ones. They're okay. there, you can go and see them. Um, I'm seeing if there's any other questions on there. Well, Merry Christmas to all of you. Happy yes. Hanukkah, that's coming up too real soon. So yes. just have a wonderful season and stay strong. And we'll see you in 2021 and it's gonna be good. Yes, and at 11.59 p.m. on New Year's Eve, I will think of you burning as I'm in my calendar. backyard burning my calendar. <laughs> <laughs>
I'm all for all right. it. I'm all for it. Awesome. All right, Thank you, Susan. Good night, everyone. Thank you.